Hi guys, and welcome to my channel. Okay, so I am so excited for this video. This literally arrived in the mail not even like an hour and a half ago. I have been obsessively checking the tracking because I'm just so excited. So a little while ago, I did a video and I reviewed these handmade watercolor paints and they're by Artemis Paint Studio, which is a independent handmade watercolor company. It's all handmade in the USA. I was very impressed when I tried them last time. So I saw on Instagram that Artemis Paint Studio was having a moving sale. And what they were doing for this moving sale is they are doing mystery palettes. So excited about this. So there are three tiers. There's a five mystery paint tier, a 10 mystery paint tier, and a 15 mystery paint tier. Each palette is hand selected by her and they all contain different colors. So the link is on the website. They are actually currently temporarily closing shop because they are moving on May 1st, but they are still as of the time that I'm filming this video, offering the mystery paints. So you have till May 1st to kind of get these if this is something that you're interested in. So these are a 30% discount from their regular paint set prices. So the five paint set is $25. The 10 paint set, which is what I got is $50. And the 15 paint set is $75. So I ordered it. And uh, I'm not gonna talk anymore because I, I just wanna open it and I wanna see. Oh, this is the packaging. It says, all you need is love and watercolor paint, which is adorable. And then this side has like a keep dry, do not bend, handle with care little sticker, but it's all customized, so I think that's cute. Okay, let's open this up. I've always been passionate about supporting independent and small businesses. And especially right now, it feels like a really good time to do so. There's Twix in here. Thank you, thank you. I love Twix. Okay. So this is what the packaging looks like. The last packaging from the previous paint set was also absolutely adorable. So they never let down, I swear. So there's a mini Twix. <gasps> I got a pink, I don't know if it's pink or red. It looks like pink red. Anyway, that's really exciting because my other one is purple. This is the little tin that they come in. This is wrapped in a beautiful little ribbon. So cute. Da -da -da -da. Artist quality watercolor paints, richly pigmented mineral paints for the everyday artist. So yes, these are mineral based paints and they granulate oh, so beautifully. Ah, this is so cute. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited right now. Okay, calm down. There's metallics in here, calm down. So when I sent the message to get these paints, I did mention that I already had the split primary set, which is what I used in my last video, which is a six piece set. And they, it looks like just from glancing that she did take that into account and didn't send me any paint colors that I already had. So super excited about that. So let's go through these colors and maybe make some swatches and see what we got. There is a little swatching card right here. So the first color is called Caput Mortem. Ooh. These are magnetic on the bottom and then the names are printed on the side. Caput Mortem is a reddish brown color. This one is Watt and it appears to be a nice black. The next one is Van Dyke Brown. Great brown, always good to have. Seriously, a staple in most watercolor sets that I have. Purple, purple. If you guys don't know, purple is my favorite color. This is ultraviolet. One of the things that I love about Rin drawing with waffles, her love of purple. Beautiful purple color, so stoked to use that. This one is number 21 and it is Tough Purple. That's a fun name, okay. This looks like a maybe more brown purple. The next color in here is called Pipestone and it's more of a lighter earthy red. Okay, <laughs> this one's metallic. <gasps> Oh, it's pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my God. Okay, calm self. This is called Justice. Yeah, Justice. I like that. Okay, this next one, it looks like a beautiful green. It's called Malachite. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. That's a really pretty green. I love how so many of these colors are just really unique. This one is Dagny and it looks like more of a blue toned gray color. Yeah, I can definitely see some of that blue in there. And then the last one we have is another metallic. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> and this one is Danconia Copper. So these are all of the colors that I got in my mystery set. 
I think it's so fun to just have somebody else choose your paint colors for you. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to sketch something up and I am going to make a piece just with these mystery colors that were selected for me. So we'll see how it comes out and I am really excited. So let's, let's make some art guys, let's make some art. Okay, so I drew up this sketch on some Sennelier watercolor paper. This is the cold press watercolor paper. And I've had a few people ask me about my sketches, like how do I make sure that the sketch doesn't show through on the watercolor and while I do feel like you can still see my sketch a little bit on the watercolor what I do to do that is after I draw the sketch I take a kneaded eraser and I just gently like bounce it on the paper and that helps lift and lighten the graphite lines so that you can paint over it a little bit more easily. So I decided I made a mock-up of this in Photoshop or procreate <laughs> and I decided that I really wanted to work with some purple and some more sagey mint green because I thought those two colors were so pretty and I thought it would just be a really really great chance to focus on using some of those colors the colors together reminded me a lot of lavender and I love lavender and it just seemed appropriate for spring even though I can't get out of the house um, so I decided to work with this female figure in front of some lavender flowers blossoms and I started out with a very expressionistic abstract kind of background I worked a lot of wet on wet in this and then I actually went over with some salt as you can see right now to add in some more texture this is really really great when you're building up a piece if you want some like interesting star texture in the background and I do actually have another video where I talk about all of the different ways that you can create texture in watercolor so if you're interested in creating texture then definitely check that video out when I'm working with watercolor I like to establish the background first and then slowly move towards the foreground just because everything is layered on top of one another so I started with that loose purple background texture then I got in that plain green that I'm going to be using for a bit of a drop shadow and then I jumped straight into the skin tone I had a lot of really, really pretty browns, so I thought I could create a nice skin tone with those. Most of the browns were a little bit more red browned. I didn't really have any yellows other than that metallic gold. So what I did was I actually mixed the metallic gold in with the other colors to add more of a yellow, especially in the highlights. And it was such a pretty effect. I normally don't use too many metallics out like mixing in my paints. I usually let them stand alone by themselves, but I added in just that little touch of gold. And because these were super pigmented, it was able to tint my colors yellow and it created this beautiful sort of subtle shine that is not super obvious when you first look at it but it kind of makes her feel a little bit glowy which I really really like for this skin I built up in a lot of layers as is my normal style but especially since it was a little bit more of a deeper skin tone I wanted to try to get more complexity in there as well I built up with layers of the lighter colors and then added in some purple and mixed that back with the darker colors the Kaput Mortem color especially was super, super pigmented, and so that was really great for adding in more of those darks. It was also difficult because I wanted to make sure I kept the bright highlights where the light was shining off of her cheekbones, the back of her shoulder, her nose, and above her eyebrow. Those were really, really bright in the reference photo that I used, and so I felt like it was really important to keep those. But at the same time, I did want to show a lot of complexity in the skin tone and the shadows, at least with the different colors that I had. The ultraviolet really, really was extremely helpful when I was working on the skin tone. I could mix it in with the more darker blue-gray, which I believe was called Dagny. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but when I mixed those two together, I was able to get a really nice dark purple color, which was great for establishing those darker shadows and it was really really helpful obviously for working on the lavender. I jumped back to the background now because I didn't want to get too invested in the skin tone before I had gotten those background 
flowers in because they're going to layer behind it. So I again went back with the water spray bottle and added some more smudgy and soft layers to the background. This is going to add more depth behind the flowers as well as the fact that some of the flowers in the front are a little bit out of focus as well. So it kind of helps me to establish where the overall shapes and shadows in that background are. Once I did that, that's when I went in and started doing some more of the details. I am not a particularly detail-oriented artist in the sense that I am not the kind of artist that, that's going to go in there and hand paint every single petal to perfection. I just don't have the patience for that. I don't have the energy and it's not something that I enjoy in art. And if you're not enjoying yourself, like what's the point? So I use simple brush strokes to get the overall shape of those little flowers that are sticking out. And then I'm slowly going to layer shadows up over the top of that to create more dimension in those lavender blossoms. I also added more of this green for the stalks. And while it was still wet, I dropped some of that green into the center of the lavender flowers. And you can see it left a little bit more green in the center, which is great because that shows where those flower buds attach to the stem. Moving back onto the skin, I really, really kept working on just trying to build up these rich shadows. I used all three of the browns kind of in tandem with each other, more of these warm browns. And then I mixed in the Van Dyke brown as well as the Watt, which was the black to add in more darkness and depth towards the shadows. I also mixed that in with some of the Kaput Mortem, which was the very bright red, and actually used some of the red metallic for the lips here. I didn't really have a red or a pink color, just more of the red browns, and since her skin tone had been mostly made of the red browns, I didn't want to use those for also like the skin and adding where more of like the blood gathers under the, the skin and it looks more flushed. So I used the red metallic to add some tint to her lips. I also mixed that with the purple to add in more of a berry tone. And I think that worked pretty well for creating more life and like color in her lips. I continued to work on the face, just trying to establish the details. This is where things kind of got really difficult for me. I have had a lot of comments recently on my channel about like, what are you, I, the whole time I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then it all came together. And I feel like I've talked about the ugly teenage phase of art a lot on my channel, but I feel like my art especially really goes through an ugly teenage phase, I think because I do so many layers. So I am just I just continue to build up until it looks right. And if I'm starting to get frustrated, a lot of times I'll just move back on to something different. So I was getting a little frustrated with the nose. I wasn't getting the depth or the separation from the cheek that I wanted to. So I just took a break, moved on from that so that it could dry and went back to working on the blossoms in the background. Again, using a combination of wet on dry and then adding that little spray bottle to the front to make more of that soft focus. One thing to note about watercolor paint, if you aren't super familiar with it, is watercolor paint does tend to dry down a little bit lighter than when you first apply it, and oftentimes the color will be a little bit duller. So when I work in layers like this, it allows me to take a moment away from the painting, allow it to dry, and then make decisions based on the actual dried colors of that piece instead of constantly making decisions based on wet colors. So I think it's very important to take time for things to dry just so you have an idea of what the actual shades and tones of your piece are going to look like when it's all finished. These paints, because they are mineral paints, can be built up to a very, very strong pigment, or you can use them in much more of a light watered down way. So with this green, I really was trying to build up a stronger pigment. And I decided to do the same with the hair. I wanted the hair to be black and I wanted it to be a very flat black. So the first thing I did was put, I put in one layer of the what. As you can see, it's pretty thin right now and you can see some of that beautiful granulation, but we're gonna go over that with another layer to really flatten out that black a little bit later. At this point, I felt like she was looking way too creepy without the eyes. It was just really hard for me to judge what was going on. I really needed to get that eye shape in there because 
her face, I felt like I couldn't get the nose right when the eyes weren't there because that connection between the eyes, the eye sockets, and the nose is all really, really important for establishing the structure of the face. So at this point, I went and did the eyes and then continued to fuss with the face and the bone structure. This is something that is really difficult for me, but I'm really trying to establish the planes of the face more in order to achieve a little bit more of a realistic and three-dimensional look. I often layer on my paints and then go back and lift them up and I will layer them on and then use a little bit of water to go in and thin them out as well so that I can glaze all of these different colors on top and build up those planes slowly, which allows me to take my time and make sure they're in the right place. As you can see, I did go back over that hair with the blue-black Dagny color. This is a really, really beautiful and interesting color because it's almost duochrome in a way. Depending on the light that you look at this piece in, the hair can appear almost a dark blue, but it can also appear a more dark red, which I think is really cool. Um, it definitely allows for more complexity when you're viewing the piece from different angles, which is one of the reasons that I love metallic paints so much. I went ahead and gave her these green nails because A, I felt like we needed a lot more green in the piece right now. I really liked this malachite color, so I really wanted to make it at least a little bit stronger of a focus in the image. I used a really small brush and then a mix between the Van Dyke brown and the Watt to create a really kind of dark neutral brown. And I'm using that to establish some of the more sharp areas of lines in the face. I recommend using a dark brown over black because it's going to blend out better into the skin tone and it's not going to look as harsh. Generally, there's not going to be any pure black on the face, even if you're going to be doing eyelashes or black uh, eyebrows like in this case, you definitely want to have the black a little bit more watered down or a little bit more blue or a little bit more brown just so that it has more depth to it. That plain black is going to really flatten out the face if you don't. Using that same small brush, I went ahead and added in some very subtle kind of line art, again using that same dark brown and just adding it in the places that I need it. I don't mind line art being visible, but I also don't want line art across the whole piece because sometimes that can actually really flatten things out. I'm also making sure to vary the opacity and color of my line art depending on where the light is hitting. Then she got some irises which is great and she's looking a lot less creepy now that she has like actual eyes which made it easier for me to figure out where everything else was going to go. I really needed to darken up around the eyes the nose and the lips so I worked on that for a little bit and then I went in with the eyelashes. I wasn't 100% happy with how they turned out at first but I went in with some water and softened them up and that really helped. If you ever go in to your painting and you are just not digging it, remember that one of the beautiful parts about watercolor is you can lift things up. So get some water, lift it up, kind of, you know, scrub at it if you need to. And you can always go over and repaint that area. Obviously, you can only do this so many times, but it is really, really helpful if something has gone down a little bit dark or if you've gone a little bit outside of the lines. It, you know, watercolor is forgiving to mistakes. And I know a lot of people do struggle with watercolor, but my biggest recommendation to you would be to allow the watercolor to kind of do what it wants to do and try to go with the flow of the watercolor. Don't try to fight it because you won't win. <laughs> I thought it would be really nice to add some gold freckles onto the back of her shoulder using that really, really pretty copper color. And I started by putting in some larger dots and then I kind of covered the rest with my hand and splattered them on for some more fine detailing as well. And I thought that looked really pretty and I really like how when it catches the light, it just kind of emphasizes that shoulder area more. Using some water, I go in and I slightly blur the inside edges of the eye. I'm going to use this to establish that shading where the eyeball is so that it actually looks round and like it's inside the socket. Then jumping to the foreground, I'm going to be putting in these lavender blossoms, which are right in the front. Because they're in the front, they're going to be a lot sharper. I'm not worrying too much about blurring these out, but I am trying to create some dimension. So I will put the dark paint on and then I'll use a tissue to kind of blot up some of those areas so it gets a little bit patchy and that is going to create a little bit more variance in the dark tones when I go back over the top. 
I knew that this piece was missing something and that was more metallics. So I decided to go in and do these really kind of interesting curved hairlines with the gold. And this kind of reminds me of like classic Egyptian hairstyles kind of. Um, but I think it's really, really pretty. I love the stylistic look it gives and I love the emphasis that it brings to her hair and also just to her face. Um, I think before her black hair was kind of a little bit too much of a mass because I didn't add shading to it and adding in that flat gold line art, I think really, really helped bring that into the piece. And I am really, really happy with that decision. How many times can I say really, really in a video? You know, there's so many drinking games you could play with my videos and they, every single one of them would destroy you. So don't recommend. I repeat myself a lot. After that, I was pretty much done. Just used that small brush to add in some finer detailing. And at the very end, I went over with some white gouache as well as some more mint gouache because I felt like this green just needed to be a little bit more opaque and maybe a little bit lighter to like look nicer with the purple next to it. I just wasn't vibing that they were both kind of the same shade. So I made it a little bit more pastel, a little bit lighter, and I was happy with that. And then I used that white to add in some highlights to the face and the lavender. So I hope that you guys liked this video. I am in love with this piece. This is one of my favorite pieces I've done in a long time. I really felt like I was trying to tap into the style that I am trying to work on right now. I am gonna make a video about how I've been developing my style. It's been done in a very intentional way this time and I'm really excited about it. So hopefully that could be helpful to some of you guys. Um, this picture is actually up for sale, the original is. So if you like this and you would like to buy it, then you can check the link in the description box below. I have also put slash I'm going to be putting a lot of originals up there, um, some older, some newer. So definitely check that out if you are looking for some art and you'd like to own one of my originals. There is a range of prices. So yeah, uh, hopefully you liked this picture. Hopefully you liked this video. Shout out to Artemis Paints. Please check out her store. These paints are so beautiful. I love them. I love this piece. And I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. Yeah.